If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We want to first note that there are two straight sections of wire. There is a section right here that's straight and then another section right here. And if we follow the current through this curved portion and then into the straight section, we would see that the current is pointing to the right. And then it continues on, goes around this circular arc and continues on to the right in this straight section as well. What we want to note is that for straight sections of the wire, if you follow the current, at least in your imagination, and imagine that it exits the wire and goes in a straight line, if it passes right through the center of curvature, then that section of wire will contribute no magnetic field at that point right there. And the same thing is true with this straight section of wire. If you kind of imagine tracing the current backwards and noting that it passes right through the center of curvature, that means that that straight section of wire also will contribute nothing to the magnetic field. So what we need to consider are the two circular arcs. And it turns out that there is a formula that gives the magnetic field produced at the center of curvature by circular arcs. So let's take a look at that equation. So in this equation, we have the magnetic field equaling a constant multiplied by the current multiplied by the angle in radians of your circular arc. Now we can see that both circular arcs are semicircles, and so the angle would be 180 degrees. However, when you plug an angle into this equation, you want to make sure that it's in radians. So for both of these circular arcs, we're going to use not 180 degrees, but its value in radians, which of course is pi. So that'll be the value for the angle phi in this equation, in this case. And then we're dividing by 4 pi times the radius of the circular arc. Now there are two circular arcs, of course, so we're going to have to set up two calculations. Perhaps we can call the first magnetic field B1 and then the next magnetic field B2. And so what we'll go ahead and do is use this equation twice, once for B1 and once for B2. So the setups are essentially the same. The only difference is that the radius we have called R1 for B1 and then the radius R2 for B2. Another consideration we have to make is the direction of both of these magnetic fields. And to understand the direction, we would have to apply a so-called right-hand rule. So let's try to apply the right-hand rule for the first circular arc, the one whose radius is R1. And what we want to imagine doing is grabbing this section of wire right here with our right hand and we're basically wrapping our hand around the wire and we want to point our thumb in the direction of the current. This is a pretty makeshift drawing, but notice the thumb right here is pointing in the same direction as the current. And then you have your four fingers. And so in this drawing, we're kind of looking at the back of these four fingers and they're sort of curling their way into the computer screen like this. And so what that means is that the magnetic field at point C produced by this circular arc of current would be pointing into the page. So we can come over next to B1 and just mark that that current is into the page. Now we'll next figure out the direction of the magnetic field that's produced by the other circular arc, the one whose radius is marked R2. Once again, we want to grab that wire with our right hand and point our thumb in the direction of the current. Notice the current is traveling in this direction. So we'll make another attempt at drawing this. And so here is a right hand. Again, the drawing is pretty lousy. I apologize for that. This is why I tutor physics instead of art. But we have the right hand grabbing the wire. And you'll notice that the four fingers down here are curling their way out of the computer screen at point C. And so we would say that B2 is pointing out of the page. And just as a convention for this problem, perhaps we can call into the page a positive value and out of the page a negative value. We have to keep in mind that magnetic fields are vectors, so it's important to make that definition. And so what we can do next is work towards finding the total magnetic field. So we can come down here and say that the sum of the magnetic fields would be B1. And we're going to say minus B2, since B2 again had a negative sign by convention. We'll go ahead and plug in the expressions we developed for B1 and B2. And to make the calculation a little bit easier, we can factor out some common factors. So they both have the constant mu naught. They have the same current, the same angle, which we said was pi, and then divided by 4 pi. 
and then that's going to be all multiplied by, let's see what's left over here. We've basically factored everything out except for the R1 that's in the denominator, so you have to make sure that you keep R1 in the denominator. And then also we have R2 in the denominator of the next term, so it's 1 over R2. And then we can also see that the pi's here are going to cancel out. Let's work our way up the page here. We'll plug in the values now. We know that this constant has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And that's Tesla times a meter per amp. And then we're multiplying by the current, which was given to us as 0.281 amps. We can see here that the amps are going to cancel out. This is all divided by 4. And then we're multiplying by 1 over R1. Now R1 and R2 are given in centimeters, so let's just make sure to convert to the standard unit of meters. So that would be 0 0.0315 meters minus 1 divided by 0 0.078 meters. So we'll pick up our calculators and type this in. And when we do that, we get about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla is the standard unit of magnetic field. So this is the magnitude of the total magnetic field. Notice that it came out to have a positive value, and we defined positive as being into the page. So the direction of this magnetic field would be into the page. And so we have successfully calculated the answers to both parts A and B.